Italy was the first Western country to face the COVID-19 emergency. In fact, its approach to the crisis has been referred to as the Italian model. But it's also the country that's paying the highest price. We'll discuss this with Italy's Foreign Minister Luigi Di Maio. Thank you, Minister, for being with us here on the programme. The figures are not encouraging. Italy has chosen not to take the same path that was taken by South Korea, or rather by China. What is it that's not working? For more than a week now, Italy has been introducing the strictest measures to prevent people from even moving around. This is the most restrictive measure that a country has taken in the Western world, especially in European countries. And this is our approach in order to get out of the crisis as soon as possible. E rappresenta il nostro modo per cercare di uscire il prima possibile da questa crisi. Today, there's an Italy model in which there are stricter rules than all the other countries. And we've also had to apply these measures within the framework of a constitutional landscape, seeing citizens blocked and denied certain rights and fundamental freedoms. Vedendo anche i cittadini bloccati e negati alcuni diritti e libertà fondamentali. Minister, we've seen a divided Europe when it comes to managing the crisis. Various member states have taken their own decisions in no particular order. We've seen the progressive closure of borders within the European Union and the suspension of Schengen. Some people have called this the beginning of the failure of Europe. In your opinion, have we reached a point of no return in terms of European unity? Surely this global crisis is an enormous responsibility for the European Union. We're at a crucial time for the European Union, and as always, when faced with unforeseen challenges, we need extraordinary measures. We cannot think of tackling a health and economic crisis such as the one we're experiencing and which will bring the whole of Europe into recession with ordinary means. That's why it's very important, and I speak on behalf of Italy, seeing all the political forces, even those that may have been tempted to leave the European Union, asking today for euro bonds. Erano state tentate dall'uscita dall'Unione Europea. Queste forze politiche, tutte insieme, oggi stanno chiedendo gli euro bonds. are a great opportunity for Europe to show that it can react to a crisis like this. It's true that we all have to take risks today with euro bonds, but we could share great opportunities tomorrow. If we work on a vaccine that can protect our populations forever, well, we can't afford to delay it. And how do we speed up the process to get a vaccine with a big international alliance on vaccines? We can't allow the vaccine to serve a few people. It must be for everyone. Non possiamo neanche permettere che il vaccino possa essere di pochi. Deve essere di tutti. You were talking about the economic responses there. Europe's reacting with the ECB cure on the one hand, with a 750 billion euro plan, and on the other hand, the stability pact has been suspended. You mentioned there the euro bonds. What do these measures mean for Italy, and how will the country exploit them? I think that the suspension of the Stability Pact is a great signal that Europe, the European Union and its member states have understood the difficulty of the situation in which Italy finds itself and which we all find ourselves. The suspension of the Stability Pact needs to include support from the European Central Bank when issuing government bonds. We also want to follow the formula Mario Draghi has indicated recently. In times of war, because Italy is currently at war with an invisible enemy, that is the virus, countries need to take on debt to make investments. And obviously the creation of that debt must be supported by the central bank. At a European level, at a European Union level, seeing the second largest manufacturing force in Europe, which is Italy, in difficulty doesn't benefit anyone. Everyone in the European Union must be convinced that the EU cannot exist without Italy. The single European market cannot exist without the productive force and capacity of our entrepreneurs. E non può esistere il mercato unico europeo senza la forza produttiva e la capacità produttiva dei nostri imprenditori. Parliamo di Cina. Prima dello scoppio della 
Now let's talk about China. Before the outbreak of the pandemic, Italy was a reference point for China in Europe. Then we saw that the fear of the spread of virus in Italy initially cooled diplomatic relations a little between the two countries. But now we see that China is ready to send medical aid and medical staff. How has this relationship evolved and is this just propaganda or is this help from China really sincere? per fare propaganda commerciale oppure si tratta di un aiuto sincero da parte della Cina in questo momento. Io già eh, prima di questa crisi abbiamo sempre detto che guardavamo alla Cina come un partner. Even before this crisis, we always said we looked at China as a trading partner. And our relationship with China, as we said in the past, cannot affect our geopolitical position and our alliances with NATO and the United States of America and at a European level. One can't think at this moment of conceiving the aid mechanism that has not just come from China as a decision by Italy to change its geopolitical position. We're allies of the United States, we're in NATO and we're in the European Union. Historically, the Italian way has always been that representation of Italy in a world as a bridge between the West and the East with great relations with the whole world. And thanks to those relations, all over the world, there are countries that are helping us. In tutto il mondo ci sono paesi che ci stanno aiutando. You were referring to Russia earlier, which is offering a significant aid mission to Italy. But this is raising some doubts. There are fears over how international alliances will look once the pandemic is over. What's your response to that? And what's the real purpose of this mission? There was a phone call between Prime Minister Conte and President Putin. The Russian Federation has sent face masks, ventilators and medical staff and teams to disinfect public buildings in our cities. They've helped. They've helped in their way and in an act of solidarity. Italy is not a country that has to fear, as a result of aid, that it'll have to bow in submission to other states. We're in the G7 and we have many friends in the world.